Welcome to Engineering with Rosie. The idea for today's video came a while back when my friend Kate, hi Kate, posted one of my wind energy videos on Facebook and a friend of hers replied with a helpful link to an article showing piles of wind turbine blades being buried in landfill. So Kate asked me to help her respond to him and since I'm obviously a bad friend, it has taken me about three months to get that response, but here it is now. In this video, I'm going to talk about how long wind turbines last, how much waste there is at the end of their life, and how much of that waste can be recycled. Then I'm going to compare the wind turbine waste with the waste produced by coal power plants and the amount of garbage the average person creates over the lifetime of a wind turbine. There has been a lot of focus on wind turbines end of life recently. You may have seen posts and articles like these popping up in your social media feeds. Photos like these raise questions about whether you can really call wind turbines green if they create so much non-recyclable waste. Does burying tons of fiberglass at the end of a turbine's life undo all the good work done by the clean energy generated over its lifetime? These are completely reasonable questions and I want to know the answers too. But one thing that I noticed was that these questions are always about wind turbines in isolation. I didn't see anyone asking how the waste produced by wind turbines compared to other forms of electricity generation or other sources of waste. So I set out to do a little bit of what I'm calling investigative engineering. I was actually really surprised by the results and I think that you will be too. Let's start by talking about the scale of the problem. How long do wind turbines last? How much waste do we need to deal with at the end of their life? And how much of that waste can be recycled? Wind turbine lifetimes are most commonly 20 years. Most of the mass of a wind turbine is metal or concrete and can be recycled relatively easily and economically. It's cheaper for the company responsible for decommissioning to recycle these materials than it is to send them to landfill. So that's what they do. Wind turbine blades make up approximately 10 to 15% of the turbine weight and the blades are the only major component that can't be recycled. The primary material used to make the blades is fiberglass with relatively small amounts of other materials like paint, balsa wood, carbon fiber, some little bits and pieces of other things. Now composite materials like fiberglass and carbon fiber can't be easily or economically recycled yet so we need to dispose of them in other ways. Incidentally, this is true for all products made out of composite materials, not just wind turbine blades. Wind turbine blades make up only around 5% of the mass of composite products produced annually. The construction, transportation, marine and infrastructure industries all share this problem of what to do with composite products at the end of their life. And in these industries, it's on a much bigger scale than it is for wind turbine blades. But still, the number and the size of wind turbines installed continues to increase nearly every year, meaning that this end of life problem is growing. For now, the amount of wind turbine blade waste is relatively small, even if the photos of blades in landfill look shocking. The first utility scale wind farms were installed in the 1990s, and it's only these early farms that are ready to retire now. The current figure is probably only a few tens of thousands of tons per year. And yeah, okay, perhaps only a few tens of thousands of tons sounds like a really big number. But by 2050, the amount of wind turbine blades will be between 200,000 to 370,000 tons per year. A huge increase. When it is time for a wind turbine to retire, you have a few options. The best thing that you can do is to extend the life of the turbine. This might involve repair, refurbishment, replacing some components. This can be really economical and there are a lot of these kinds of lifetime extension projects happening at the moment, which is helping to delay the time when we start to see really large volumes of blade waste. But it's only a delay. The turbines won't last forever. Obviously, eventually you will need to decommission each turbine and do something with its blades. Now, there are four main things that you can do with them currently, and to be honest, none of them are really that great. 
The first option is landfill, which we've already seen. You truck the blades to landfill and you bury them. It's the cheapest of the options. The second option is to regrind and reuse. You chop the blades up, you separate the materials as much as possible, and then the resulting low value material can be used as a filler and combined with other materials and products like um, insulation and building panels. What can't be used in this way still has to go to landfill. The third option is cement kiln, where the blade material is ground and heated and used in cement. And it actually reduces the carbon dioxide emissions by about 16% compared to standard cement. This is the process preferred in Germany where sending blades to the landfill is prohibited. The fourth option is pyrolysis, where you heat the composite material at high temperature and recover the fibers. But it hasn't been commercialized yet for wind turbine blades. Researchers are working on promising technology that will allow this on a large scale for wind turbine blades. It should be ready within a few years. And I'm actually going to be talking with the lead researcher on that project. So keep an eye out for that video coming up. The upshot is that for now, the cheapest option is to send blades to landfill. So where that's allowed, that's what happens. But you know what? Talking about wind turbine waste on its own seems a bit strange to me. When I've seen this issue discussed in the media, it's always talking about wind turbines in isolation. Waste from wind turbines is a problem, but the choice isn't between wind turbines and nothing. If we stop installing wind turbines but don't reduce our electricity usage, then we'll need to add another form of generation instead. It could be coal, oil, gas, nuclear, hydro, solar, any of these alternatives has associated waste. But to be able to make meaningful comparisons across the different sources, we really need to do a few calculations. Um, to keep things relatively simple, I just crunched the numbers on coal. I chose coal because it's currently the main source of electricity generation in Australia, where I'm from and also in many other parts of the world for now. <laughs> I'm also going to compare the amount of waste produced from wind and coal electricity to the amount of municipal garbage produced so that we can get a sense of perspective for the problem. This isn't going to be a detailed life cycle analysis. That is incredibly complex and it's beyond the scope of what I can achieve in a weekly video. Here, I'm going to compare only the solid waste from coal power plant operation and end of life waste from wind turbines with municipal waste. There's also waste from upstream processes for all of these, and I haven't included any of that, just so I can keep the amount of research and calculations manageable. I will put a link to an article that I wrote that has all of the sources and the assumptions, um, so you can follow that. And if you think that I missed something important out then, let me know in the comments. A wind turbine lasts about 20 years and has on average 10 tonnes of blade material per megawatt of turbine capacity. Over its lifetime, a one megawatt turbine would produce about 61,000 megawatt hours of electricity, assuming a 35% capacity factor. So that is about 160 grams of solid waste per megawatt hour of wind energy. In 2010, Australians used on average 2,691 kilowatts of electricity in their homes. So in 20 years, the average Australian will use 54 megawatt hours of electricity in their home, making their share of solid wind turbine waste 9 kilograms. That's nine kilograms of wind turbine waste for 20 years worth of one person's electricity usage. In the US, they use 4,517 kilowatt hours per person per year, which gives them a 15 kilogram share of wind turbine waste over 20 years. In Germany, it's a bit less as they only use 1,731 kilowatt hours per year, giving them a 5.6 kilogram share of wind turbine waste for 20 years worth of electricity. So my mountain bike is German and it has more composite materials in it than a German's share of wind turbine waste over 20 years of electricity use. So I guess I should be more concerned about my biking habit than my wind energy habit. 
Now let's compare that with if the electricity had been generated from coal power plant instead of from a wind turbine. When coal burns, it produces ash, 84 kilograms per megawatt hour. About 64% of the ash is reused in other products like cement, but the remainder goes to landfill. And it's not inert like a wind turbine blade. It contains varying amounts of toxic chemicals. If the electricity comes from coal instead of wind, then the amount of solid waste produced by 20 years worth of electricity is 1,600 kilos for an Australian, 1,000 kilos for a German, and 2,700 kilos for the average US resident. So this means that the amount of solid waste from one megawatt hour of coal electricity is about 200 times more than the amount of waste from one megawatt hour of wind electricity. And that doesn't even account for all of the waste from a coal power plant. In a coal power plant, there's also scrubber slurry and polluted wastewater. There's, of course, end of life waste from the coal power plant equipment and there are gas emissions. There's carbon dioxide, which we're all well aware of and its effect on uh, the Earth's climate. And there's also particulate pollution, which is the cause of millions of premature deaths per year worldwide. So even though I work in the wind industry, I was surprised by these results. I was expecting the amount of waste from wind turbine blades to be more than it is from other sources of electricity generation, just purely because that's what I've seen reported in the media. Even though there is so much waste associated with coal power plants, because the ash is produced and disposed of continuously on site, there isn't a single event at the end of 20 years where it's transported to landfill for us to see and be shocked by. So now let's move to the final comparison with municipal garbage. The average Australian generates 560 kilos of municipal waste each year. It's 630 kilos in Germany and 740 kilos in the US. So between 10 and 15 tonnes total in the 20 year period we're basing our comparison on. Some of this is recycled. The official figures are 55% recycling rate in Australia, 60% in Germany and 35% in the US. Not all of the municipal waste designated for recycling is actually recycled though. Um, a lot of it is unsorted or it's contaminated or just simply too low value to have any economical use and so it ends up in landfill. But that's a sidetrack I don't really want to go down today. Could be a topic for another video, perhaps. So I'm going to assume that all of the waste that we put in recycling actually gets recycled. And that means that we have between 5 and 10 tons of non-recycled municipal waste per person over 20 years. So let's compare that to the amount of waste produced by electricity generation from wind or coal. The amount of non-recycled municipal solid waste is 3 to 5 times more than from coal and over 500 times more than from wind. And like coal, municipal waste contains toxic chemicals and it releases greenhouse gas emissions as it decomposes. Now, of course, I already knew that we produce way too much garbage as part of our modern lifestyle, but uh, the scale of it hadn't really hit me until now when I make the comparison. Okay, I know there were a lot of numbers in the previous section, so I want to state this as simply as possible. If an individual Australian gets all of their household electricity from wind energy, over 20 years, their share of non-recyclable waste will be 9 kilograms. That same mass of solid waste is produced by one person's share of coal-fired power plant in 40 days, and it's just 13 days of municipal waste for one person. The US figures are similar and in Germany due to their lower electricity usage but higher garbage production, it takes only eight days for one person's share of municipal waste to be the same as 20 years of waste from their share of wind energy. To sum up, waste associated with non-recyclable wind turbine blades is a problem. We need to find better solutions so that we don't have to continue to put them in landfill. But compared to waste from other sources, waste from wind turbines is actually very small and it's certainly not a reason to turn back to coal energy. You'd get a lot more waste that way. Coal power plants create vastly more waste that goes to landfill and it's also toxic. It has associated gas waste including carbon dioxide and particulates that harm human health. 
But when you're just talking about the masses, bigger than either coal or wind electricity is municipal waste. This is a problem that by mass is more than 500 times greater than wind turbine waste. So let's tackle the problem of wind turbine waste. That's important. But without taking the focus off the more important issues of reducing coal usage and reducing municipal waste. So thank you for watching today and I hope that I've been able to give you a little bit of perspective on the wind turbine waste issue relative to other waste problems that we have to deal with as a society. Now, if you uh, didn't understand something or thought I explained something badly or you disagree with some of my assumptions or methodology, then please let me know in the comments and uh, make sure that you keep an eye out for upcoming videos on this topic of uh, wind turbine blade reuse and recycling. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then please remember to like and subscribe and share with your friends. I'll see you next time.